La Conexión, The Connection, a television show that seeks to connect the Hispanic community to programs and services that are in support of them. NAMI Delaware is a statewide organization that continues to support, educate, and advocate for individuals and their families who are dealing with mental health illness. I have here with us Chuck Tarver, who is going to tell us a little bit about the organization and the type of services it provides. Welcome to the show. It's good to be here. It's great to have you. <laughs> Can we start off with just basically letting us know who NAMI Delaware is? Okay. Well, NAMI Delaware is part of a national organization known as NAMI, or the National Alliance on Mental Illness. We specifically are NAMI Delaware, just as there's a NAMI Maryland, a NAMI Pennsylvania, so on and so forth. So we are the state organization for the National Alliance on Mental Illness here in Delaware. The focus of the organization is to provide support for individuals living with mental illness. And because mental illness is a disease that affects the family as well, we provide support for the family, additionally. And how did this organization get started? Best way to describe both the national organization and our local organization is as a kitchen table organization. Family members literally gathered in people's homes to found this organization. The national organization was founded in 1979, so it's, it's going to celebrate 35 years this year. Delaware's chapter was founded in 1983, so we're, we're actually one of the older ones of the organization. And again, just like the National Kitchen Table Organization, founded in 1983, so we're celebrating our 30th year, which we've just been having a ball all year. We're going to run that through to June when we, <laughs> <laughs> when we change. So, so that, that's how the organization got started. Family members said, how can we provide for our loved ones who are dealing with these illnesses, and how can we advocate and get services for our loved ones? Now, is it safe to say that uh, there was a need for an organization like this in Delaware? I mean, Absolutely. you can have someone that you are working with and may not know that they have a mental, mental illness. Absolutely. So what is it that uh, you feel that was a necessity to have an organization like this in Delaware? So the, the reason that the organization got started is mental illness affects people in, in, in so many different ways. But one of the ways that it affects people is in dealing with behavior and in dealing with their ability to lead a normal life. So if you have people who are constantly getting into um, trouble with the law or dealing with homelessness or issues related to violence, either because they're vulnerable and being attacked or because they're out of control and, and perhaps aggressive toward other people, then you, you've got a whole level of problems. And there were literally no services to really try to provide for these folks. And I'll give you a, a prime example. Let's take homelessness. I, I did mention that. NAMI Delaware owns 60 houses throughout the state of Delaware. So one of the things that these family members discovered is that we've got people with no place to live. How can we structure an organization to provide for them? Okay. And how can one get involved with your organization? You can get involved with us very easily, and we are always looking for volunteers. Um, the general number, which is the helpline number, which is 888-427-2643, and I'm going to say it again, 888-427-2643. Um, all of our lines come through the same place. So I'll, I'll just kind of give the, the helpline number. That also connects to the office as well. So what are some of the other programs that the organization provides? So we do a, a wide variety of programs. Again, and, and the best way to look at it is those programs that are designed to serve peers directly, and those are people who are living with mental illness or living in recovery. Okay. And we have several programs designed to affect peers. And then we've got programs that are designed to focus on family members, and we've got several that, that deal with those as well. On the peer side, we've got a 10-week course called Peer to Peer, which is designed to teach people how to live in recovery, how to develop those skills where they recognize 
when their illness is coming on, what those triggers are, and how to keep themselves well. We also have a program which is a, a drop-in. It's a, it's a less formal program where you, we have several weekly meetings of peers where they get together and, again, provide support for one another. Again, dealing with how do I keep well? How do I recognize signs that perhaps I need to get to a doctor or perhaps I need to talk with someone? And, and that's, that's on the peer side. That's uh, something called NAMI Connection, where they can, can come once a week. And we have several meetings throughout the state that deal with those. On the family side, again, we've got a formal program called Family to Family, and that's a 12-week program, just like going to school for 12 weeks, where people can learn how to support and advocate for family members who are living with men mental illness. And... We also have an informal drop-in meeting. Those are on a monthly basis, monthly support meetings that happen, again, throughout the state where people can, can drop in and, and get support that they need. And people can find out about all of those dates and times by calling the helpline. Wonderful. And now uh, mental health illness can affect all nationalities. Absolutely. How are you reaching out to the Latino community? That, for us, is something that we're really focusing on a lot this year. On our staff, presently, we don't have any bilingual folks. We do have some bilingual volunteers, um, but we are actively seeking grants and things of that nature so that we can improve that part of our staff and actually get people out who can provide the kind of language skill services that we need to, to reach out to that community. And we also, of course, know that it, it's one language, many communities. So we, we've got some, some cultural training and things that we're doing to mm -hmm. just really try to, to relate to people, to reach out to folks and, and, and meet them where they are. So, for example, we, one of our volunteers who's involved with our helpline, for us, it's a little bit difficult when somebody calls and needs support in Spanish if she's not there, you know, we have to, to go to voicemail or take a message. And then when she comes in, she handles it. But we'd like to move beyond that. Okay. So before we leave, uh, if there is a Hispanic person watching who is interested in perhaps volunteering some services for the organization, uh, where do they have to go or who can they contact? The best number to call us is the helpline number. Okay. And that's at 888-427-2643. That's the best number always to reach us. Our offices are located right here in the city of Wilmington, 2400 West 4th Street. And I always tell people it's on the, the 24 bus line because we have a lot of folks. That's the best way for them to get to us. And we're just a couple of blocks from Lancaster Avenue, which is on the 4th. <laughs> so we are easily accessible. And so people can come in. I'm the person who coordinates the volunteers. So I'm always looking for volunteers. And I'll be honest, I'm always looking for volunteers, even when they don't know I'm looking at them as a volunteer. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'll, I'll hear somebody who's bilingual, and next thing you know, I'm approaching them like, how did you like <laughs> So I, I do that. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. wonderful. Mm -hmm. Well, Chuck, that's all the time we have. But thank okay, you so much for sharing thank this you, information with us. It's been great being here. Thank you for thank having you. Much. All right. Stay tuned. We'll return after these short messages. <laughs> Kids will spend eight minutes decorating their little brother. Brushing for two minutes now can save your child from severe tooth pain later. Two minutes, twice a day. They have the time. Los niños pueden pasar ocho minutos decorando a su hermano pequeño. Cepillarse dos minutos puede salvar a tus hijos de sufrir un dolor severo. Dos minutos, dos veces al día. Ellos tienen tiempo. About six to nine million Americans will have a gambling problem in any given year. Yet only a small fraction of these individuals seek out support services. 
The Delaware Council on Gambling Problems is an organization here in Delaware that continues to advocate for these individuals and their families. I have here with us Sachin Karnick and Jerry Tiano, Hello. who's going to tell us a little bit about this organization and the type of services it provides. Welcome to the show, gentlemen. Thank you. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. you for coming on. All right. Thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, let's first talk about the organization. What is uh, the Delaware Council on Gambling Problems? Well, the Delaware, Co the, uh, Delaware Council on Gambling Problems is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Uh, its primary mission is to raise awareness, uh, public awareness overall, that um, problem gambling or what we call gambling disorder is a treatable problem, that there's treatment available for it, and also to facilitate a network of services uh, where people can, can obtain um, treatment from nationally certified counselors throughout the state of Delaware. You know, so we want uh, to encourage people to access our services uh, if they need help. Okay. And uh, there's so many different types of gambling. Mm -hmm. Sure. How can one become addicted to this? Oh, mm -hmm. gosh. Yeah. Um, there's, there's a lot of research still yet to be done, but um, there seems to be some indication that, that the illness is caused by neurology, genetics, or, or something uh, there's a predisposition, okay? Some people, some people don't know that it even is there until later in life. Other people start off as children, and they get addicted early, and some don't even realize they're addicted, but it turns out later in life when they start handling money and, you know, working and having families, then the problems start to, uh, to show up. But there is some predisposition that it is about some genetic. It is a genetic uh, aspect of it. And now with the economic downfall, a lot of families experiencing unemployment, yeah. um, is there an increase in gambling problems? Um, we, well, that's one of the, that's a great question. <laughs> one of the things that we try to figure out all the time, because the demand for our services goes up and down, mm -hmm. and there's no logic to it. Okay, um, y sometimes we get more calls when the economy's down. Sometimes we don't, but. People tend to gamble more when the economy is down rather than less, as a fact. Um, so the chances that they're, they're going to get in trouble are greater, but there's a, a reluctance to ask for services. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, our numbers go up and down all the time. And what type of services does Delaware Council on Gambling well, Problems have? Well, uh, the first thing to remember is that we have a 24-hour, seven days a week, 365 days a year helpline, which is accessible at, at any time. And that number is 888-850-8888. It's pretty easy to remember. Uh, anyone can call that number. And we have a process that we go through by obtaining some information about the caller, the nature of their problem. And based on their situation that we kind of assess on the phone, you know, a brief assessment on the phone, we will then refer them to Gamblers Anonymous. We will then, then also connect them, connect them to one of our treatment providers based on their geographical location within the state of Delaware. You know, so it is mostly generally free of charge because insurance companies don't necessarily cover for gambling disorder as of now, but that may change at, at some point. Oh, well, that's wonderful to know for now. Okay. And what are some of the signs and symptoms that one should know about or look out for to see if they are um, suffering from it? Generally, uh, a predisposition for gambling. Other things in, in the individual's life don't matter. They miss family mm -hmm. events. They, they don't pay as much attention at school or at work or whatever they're doing. Yeah. Uh, unexplained need for money. I mean, all of a sudden, there's always a need for money, um, and and a lot of a change in behavior. Mm -hmm. uh, people people's behavior change radically when they get addicted. They're mm -hmm. not the same person. They don't yeah. they don't converse with people. They react badly to situations. Those are kind of some of the highlights. And and, and there's two two specific criteria that, mm -hmm. that we look look for. You know, there's two specific questions called the live bet tool. One question is. Have you felt the need to bet more and more money? It's very important. It's the need. It's a drive that says, I want more of that experience, that euphoria, that escape, that mm -hmm. numbing out or zoning out, whatever that may be, mm -hmm. maybe for the individual. So the need to bet more and more money kind of pushes that experience, experience further. You know? mm -hmm. And then the other question is, have you lied to someone important to you about your gambling? So lying about gambling to family members, to close friends, to children, those kinds of things are very, very serious. People use their paycheck for gambling at times when they should be using it for their household expenses. Mm -hmm. You know, so these are two questions. If there is a yes answer to either question, we strongly recommend that you contact our helpline okay. uh, so that we can do a further assessment and help you out before the problem gets progressively worse. Oh, uh, for those who don't know, uh, the month of 
March yes. is National Gambling Problem Awareness Month. Yes. What are some of the events that your organization's offering? Yeah, Cuban Plus, uh, well, yeah, uh, you know, this is a, a, a very important month, um, and it's kind of, kind of been changed now from Awareness Week to Awareness Month, month. you know. <laughs> right. We have a whole month of interesting activities. One of the things that we'll be doing is going to all the racinos, which are the, the, the three casinos that we have, but they're called racinos. Okay. You know, um, and we'll be doing full tabletop display presentations there, talking to various <coughs> people who will stop by the table to obtain information about problem gambling and the services we provide. We will also be in the schools. Uh, we're in the schools throughout the year as it is, but uh, we'll be in various public high schools uh, throughout mm -hmm. the state of Delaware. Uh, we will also be in uh, various newspapers, maybe giving some interviews uh, in the newspapers. We'll be running ads. So there may be anywhere from 50 to 70 different activities are planned as of now for National Problem Gambling Awareness Month. It, the, uh, the goal is to raise awareness statewide about the nature of what we call a gambling disorder and how to access treatment. Okay. So that is the main goal. And why has your organization reached out to public high schools? I know Jerry touched bases on that. This can start at a very young mm -hmm. age, but sure. why did you find the need to reach out to some high schools? Uh, ju just because of um, it's part of a prevention program. Um, you know, the best thing to do with these things is prevent them. Don't let them get started. Um, and uh, we we had some evidence that the the youth was getting more involved in gambling, mm -hmm. well, you know, in the recent past or even maybe, maybe longer. But there was more involvement by youth. So there's okay. definitely a need to get there and raise their awareness exactly. about what this thing is all about and what to reckon what to look for in, if they're, they're getting in trouble. And okay. just a very just a quick follow up mm -hmm. on his answer. Uh, if you look at all the eighth graders and eleventh graders within mm -hmm. public high school systems, forty nine percent of all the boys have placed a bet within the past year. 33% of all the girls have placed a bet within the past year. That's 8th grade and 11th grade. And then the other interesting thing is that if you look at the, the students who are doing worse in school with C's and D's and F's, those kinds of grades, the level of betting is higher. Also, those individuals who placed bets within the past month, kids I'm talking about, you know, teenagers, uh, for them they're much more likely to engage in criminal activity, be involved with the law, have other risky behaviors with drugs, alcohol, those kinds of things. Okay. I said, Shane, we're uh, almost running out of time here, but can you let us know about uh, the bowl chat on your website and then how we can yeah, contact you? Sure. Um, if they go to our website, www.dcgp.org, okay. uh, there's a button on there, and if they click that button during the day from 9 to 5, uh, there's somebody on the line waiting to chat with people. So if they want to talk that way or contact us that way instead of phone, they can do that. And uh, thank you so much for joining us, gentlemen. Great. This is a wonderful you. opportunity to reach out to the Hispanic community. Yes, yes. As we all know, gambling is to all across nationalities. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and I look forward to having possibly you on again in the future. Sure. Love to do it. Thank, thank you, you very so much. Thank, thank you, you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Stay tuned. We'll return after these short messages. <laughs> I got the job. I've got the job. Welcome aboard. I've got a job to do today. Have a good first day at work, Mom. Donate to Goodwill. Help provide job training in your community. Me dieron el trabajo. Sí, sí, sí. El trabajo es suyo. Hoy tengo un trabajo. Buena suerte, mamá. Dona a Goodwill. Ayuda a brindar capacitación laboral en tu comunidad. is the City of Wilmington's first dual language expeditionary elementary school. I've had the honor and privilege to sit with the school's first principal. Let's take a look at some important details that I believe you should know about this new school. Well, hi, Suze. Thank you for this opportunity to interview you about the new school that's opening up here in the City of Wilmington. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me here. I, I appreciate that, um, you know, um, you're taking the time to um, just to give to know a little bit more about La Academia, so thank you for that. And speaking of uh, La Academia, can you tell us a little bit about the school and it be being the first charter school here in Wilmington to be dual language? Mm -hmm. So, um, like you mentioned, um, La Academia is going to be a dual language school, which means that we're going to be teaching every subject, um, reading math, writing, um, social studies, science, in both languages, so in English and in Spanish. So half of the time the students will be in a classroom 
where the instruction is going to be happening in English and then um, the other half of the time they'll be in a classroom where the instruction will, will be happening in Spanish. Can you tell us about La Academia being an expeditionary school and the details of the model? La Academia is also part of a network of schools which is called expeditionary learning schools and so what um, this, uh, this methodology um, encompasses is that um, we um, go out into the real world um, in what we call expeditions and uh, what we try to do is we try to have a real world application to what we're studying. Um, so basically we try to find situations um, that involved um, just uh, things that we're studying in science and social studies, going outside, doing some research. Um, we don't call them field trips, we call them field work because our students are actually acting as researchers outside in the world. And then we bring what we studied outside into the classroom and we integrate it with science and social studies and reading and writing so that the students are engaged, it's really hands on, and um, so that the students have a purpose behind what they are learning on a daily basis in the classroom. What grades is the school going to offer for these students here in Wilmington and throughout the state of Delaware? The school is set to open in August um, this year, August 2014, and um, we are accepting applications. Well, we are opening with kinder and first grade only because we're a dual language school. So for that reason, we're starting with kinder and first. We are a, an elementary school, a full kinder through fifth grade um, elementary school. But uh, we're, we'll be adding a grade, um, a grade level every year. So we're starting with kinder and first. In 2015, we'll add a second grade. So the students who are in first grade will move up to second, and so on and so forth. So that by the year 2018, um, La Academia will be a um, full kinder through fifth grade um, elementary school. And what was the goal for uh, how many students you'd like to get enrolled? Um, so the number of students, we're accepting 300 um, students the first year, 150 in kindergarten and 100, 150 in first grade. Um, and so, so yeah, right now it's the, uh, the, the right month, or I would say if parents are interested in enrolling their students, this is the month where um, we're telling the community that um, it's really important to sign up and they can do that by visiting our website which is academiacharter.com and um, they can find the application um, right there on our on our web page um, they can also if they need more information will be um, will be at the uh, woodlawn library for a couple of days in february february 15 and february um, 24 um, 15 will be um, from 12 to 2 that's a saturday and then on the 24th we'll be there from 4 to 6 so uh, we encourage you to come and, you know, come and um, just uh, talk, you know, have, take the time to uh, just get to know a little bit more about La Academia by, you know, um, um, talking a little bit more with us during these events. The Latin American Community Center has a great partnership with La Academia. Can you tell us a little bit about this partnership? So the LACC is going to, they have an amazing um, before and after school program. So what we, um, our partnership involves then, them, I'm sorry, uh, providing a, uh, a before and after school program for La Academia as well. This will take place in our building, in the Community Education Building, which is located on French Street. And uh, so we're very excited about this partnership that, we're, um, that we'll be having with the uh, Latin American Community Center. ¿Y en español puede decir los detalles de esta escuela? Bueno, algunos de los detalles de la escuela de la Academia Antonio Alonso es que somos una escuela Eh, que ofrecemos una educación eh, de lenguaje dual y también somos, una, somos parte de un grupo de escuelas que se llaman eh, de aprendizaje expedicionario. <coughs> um, el lenguaje dual quiere decir que toda la instrucción la vamos a hacer mitad del tiempo en español y mitad del tiempo en inglés para que todo estudiante que, eh, que vaya a nuestra escuela eh, puedan dominar los dos idiomas completamente y que al finalizar quinto año puedan eh, hablar inglés y español eh, de una manera este bueno de, de, de una manera precisa y, y con fluidez vaya eh, el otro aspecto que es importante entender acerca de la escuela es que somos parte de un grupo de escuelas que se llama aprendizaje expedicionario y el aprendizaje expedicionario eh, comprende eh, pues una metodología en donde los estudiantes van a salir eh, van a estar fuera del salón de clase en expediciones y vamos a encontrar eh, vamos a encontrar situaciones que nos afecten en el día a día o que tengan una eh, conexión con la vida real afuera del salón de clases, ir a investigar estas eh, situaciones o estos aspectos que, que, que ocurren en la comunidad 
ir a tomar notas, a tomar fotografía, video, entrevistar personas y después de que hagamos eso vamos a traer toda esa información al salón de clases y basar nuestras ciencias, ciencias sociales, lectura, escritura, matemáticas con esta, en, con esta conexión que vamos a tener con la vida real, este, para que los estudiantes estén emocionados, tengan interés en lo que están estudiando y vean el impacto directo que tienen con, con el día a día, en, 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 en la, con la realidad del día a día. Eh, más, más o menos son dos aspectos importantes de la, de la escuela. ¿En español puede decir los beneficios de esta escuela? Bueno, los beneficios, eh, como ya hablamos, es una escuela donde los estudiantes van a estar no solamente sentados escuchando al maestro, van a estar este, usando sus manos, usando, eh, trabajando en equipo, usando tecnología, yendo en expediciones eh, en la comunidad. Entonces, los estudiantes se ha demostrado que con, por, por, estos, por este medio los estudiantes demuestran más interés, eh, se encuentran... Eh, se, se ha encontrado que, que le, le echan un poquito más ganas o tienen más ganas de estudiar porque ven el impacto directo que tienen con, con, con lo que están estudiando y con lo que sucede con el día a día en, en, su, en, eh, en sus casas, en, en su alrededor, en su comunidad. Eh, y otro aspecto importante es que van a aprender dos idiomas y bueno, no solamente eh, estamos eh, eh, tratando de, de, de promover la escuela <coughs> Mucha gente se confunde y cree que solamente son para, eh, es una escuela para, para hispanos o personas que, que quieran a, aprender inglés solamente, pero es también para los niños o padres de familia que quieran que sus hijos aprendan español. Entonces está abierto para toda la comunidad eh, y pues bueno, ya todos sabemos qué tan importante es aprender este, dos, dos idiomas en el, en el día de hoy. Y si una persona quiere obtener más información, ¿qué necesitas hacer? Para recibir más información eh, pueden ir directamente a nuestra página de internet, es academiacharter.com también pueden este, visitarnos, vamos a estar dos días en la biblioteca de, eh, que se llama Woodland, Woodland Library. Vamos a estar ahí los días, el siguiente sábado, el día 15 de febrero, eh, de eh, 12 a 2 de la tarde, al mediodía. Eh, y también vamos a estar el 24 de febrero, eh, que es un lunes, de 4 a 6 de la tarde. Vamos a estar también ciertos fines de semana en el Farmer's Market de Newcastle, eh, vamos a estar la mayoría de los fines de semana de febrero y de, y de marzo y por lo menos les, les, les estamos aconsejando a los padres que tomen conciencia que si están interesados en la escuela que traten de inscribir a sus hijos en este momento, es una escuela gratuita, hay transporte gratuito, eh, hay recursos antes y después de la escuela y pues bueno estamos muy, muy emocionados y, y esperamos que la comunidad ten, aproveche este, esta gran oportunidad. Wonderful. Bueno, Jesus, thank you so much for your <laughs> time. I really appreciate this opportunity gracias, to gracias. interview the first principal of academia. Thank Congratulations. You so thank you. <laughs> we'll return after these short messages. Hey, look at mommy. Maybe the light hurts his eyes. Maybe she's just not hungry. Look. Maybe it's her face. Avoiding eye contact is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. Mira tu mami. Quizás le molesta tanta luz. Quizás está aburrido. Quizás necesita más estímulo. Evadir la mirada es una de las primeras señales de autismo. Conoce las demás señales hoy. take away some important information from our show today, like how NAMI Delaware continues to support, educate, and advocate for individuals and their families dealing with mental health illnesses here in Delaware, and how the Delaware Council on Gambling Problems continues to advocate for those individuals and families who continue to have a gambling problem. On behalf of all of us here at WITN22, I'm Yesenia Tavares. Thank you so much for watching, and have a great day.